yo, 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 what's going on? It's the NOC, the Nerds of Color, and we are back with another show, pal, show. It's your boy, Cool Ya P, the Adobro, the Babinka Boy, the leader of the Hala Hala homies, and the Senna Gang Gang. Back again, doing it. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the amazing Ates tonight because uh, they went to sleep a little early. We're doing this a little bit late than normal, but that's all right. We're going to have fun because uh, we got some more Paper Tigers out here running wild because the, the film is bonkers, y'all. If you haven't seen it, you need to check it out. It's in theaters. It's on demand. It's available. You're going to want to check it out. Uh, shout out to my man, uh, Elaine Wee, for coming through. Shout out. Also to uh, Mikhail Shannon Jenkins, who came through uh, on the Nerds of Color uh, to rep and talk about the film. And shout out to Alan Duong, man. He, he hooked up this shirt, man. I'm repping Paper Tigers right now, through and through. I enjoyed the film. I love the film. Uh, we also did a review that's on the NRW channel. You can check that out. Uh, but today, I have uh, some amazing folks, man. I'm really happy to have them on. Uh, producer Michael Velasquez is like, man, I, I know you're getting ready to talk to Elaine, uh, but let me tell you about some other Filipinos that we have on the Paper Tigers project. We got Pinoy Love on this team, man. And so he's like, yo, I got this DP. His name's Sean Mayer. You're going to want to talk to him. And apparently, uh, and I, we're going to get the inside story. He had this partner who's also my fight choreographer, who's Pinoy. And, and he also plays one of the characters in the film. You're going to want to talk to him both, man, because they have some interesting stories. And so uh, I, I'm, I'm really curious, man. I, I looked, checked out their IMDb's. You know, I got to do my homework. And uh, that led me to a YouTube page where I saw that these brothers were doing uh, on Ken's, look up Ken Quatuga's YouTube. He's got some old films. I don't know if he really wants me to put that out there uh, of him doing his skills back in the day. Uh, Cause it's like nine years ago, but it was a lot of fun. I checked out this joint called Snapshot. Hilarious. Um, I want to know if we can get more of that. Maybe we'll get more of that. I don't know, but let's bring him in right now. Let's have some fun. I'm going to go to speak of you. Let me throw them air horns out there. Ken, Qu Ken, I, I knew I was going to brutalize it. I I'm going to let Ken say his last name and Sean Mary, y'all can unmute. Here we go. Ken and Sean, what's good? Hey, yeah, Hello, what is up? Hey man, excited to have you on. Ken, I know I put you on blast, but if okay, we don't mind real quick. Can you can you tell the, everybody how to say your last name? Because I knew I was gonna mess it up. It's Ken Kirigua. Ken Kirigua, and you got a, you go. a great story for that too, from what I recall earlier. Uh, yes, I'm looking yes. forward to hearing that. Um, so oh, Ken yeah. Kirigua, Sean Mayer, man, truly a pleasure. Salama po makuyas, man. Uh, really excited to have y'all on to come and tell your story. Uh, but before again, man, we're at, right now. Uh, I, I want to put it at the top, and then we're gonna go back to it again later on. Uh, Paper Tigers, man, it's out there. It's in the world. I know this was a, a long project to make happen. Uh, y'all, uh, shout out to, to Bao and everybody involved. Just the love that y'all wanted to put into this and not get changed up by the Hollywood system, man. Uh, it's out there in theaters, man. What has the reception been like for you guys? How has it been for you guys with Paper Tigers now uh, out there for everybody in the world to see? Uh, well, I'm, I'm with Ken, but I'm still blown away with like how well this movie has been received because it's just like, um, as we'll get into it, Kenny and I go way back and we used to do just make videos kind of for us and for the friends and for the homies. And then now that it's actually like something that we've devoted a lot of time for and like put out in the world and, you know, the masses have kind of, you know, embraced it. So it's it's awesome seeing like the reviews and just you know getting all the love online and like it's I mean it's still pretty unreal to be honest. Awesome. Yeah, I mean it's the 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 amount of the amount of support I, to add to what Sean said. You know, like a lot of the things that we did in the past was just for us and for creative expression and just to try things and to explore artistic you know views on things and you know also just being fans of cinema and and types of movie making and. For something to grow into what it has become today is kind of just, it, you're taken aback by the amount of attention it's getting one, but just the fact that it reached so many people is something very new for me. Um, I know Sean works uh, as a, you know, in, in, in the camera department and, and as a, as a um, in the industry himself, but I, I myself am not as involved in the day-to-day -day of, you know, the, the lifestyle here in terms of the industry in LA and Hollywood, so to speak. So for something like this to grow into what it is today is just, uh, you know, I got to pinch myself sometimes just because we're getting so much love from people we've never met. And, you know, they're, they're reaching out and saying how much they enjoyed the, 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 the finished product. And that, that to me is just, it's worth all the, the, 
little blood, sweat and tears that we put into it over the past, you know, 10 plus years. So. Hell yeah. And I, you love to see it. You know, that, that phrase, you love to see it, man. It, and oh, when man. you see people and that representation, man, and it, it got the rotten tomatoes approved, sign of approval. I think I saw, uh, and, and other putting it, uh, people putting it down out there in as classics already. It's already like a classic in the pantheon of, of Kung Fu flicks, if you will, you know what I'm saying? Martial arts films. Uh, I've, I've been seeing it, man. And I, I, I want a paper tigers too. I don't know. You know, we've been throwing that out there here and there. Um, I don't know how y'all feel about it, uh, or if Bao has a script ready to go. Um, but yeah, man, it was it was really great to see, it. and we'll get we'll dip into that a little bit more because I'm curious how y'all got involved with that. Um, so what we're gonna do now is like we're gonna go into that journey, man. That's what we do here at Show Pal Show. We want to know how it started, and 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 like flowers and trees, and like how we bloom into greatness. It starts from the seed. So I, I want to start from the seed with both of y'all. If y'all can uh, tell us a little bit about yourselves uh, and then we'll get into this amazing career that you're at now. So uh, what we like to do is throw it to your parents. If you both could, you know, uh, uh, y'all, y'all can pass it up between yourselves. But uh, tell us a little bit about your background. So let's start with your parents, uh, the seed uh, for them creating you and then you come into the world. Tell, tell us a little bit about your Philippine X journey and them. Were like they the first ones here in the States or did they immigrant, uh, you know, come came over? Uh, let's start from there. Uh, let me pass it back to Sean. All right. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'm first generation Filipino American for our family. Uh, I'm the youngest of three. I'm an older brother and sister. Uh, my mom is from um Davao and my dad is from Sambalas. So they, my dad, what brought us uh, stateside is my dad enlisted in the Navy, which is uh, for uh, many Filipino Americans, they're military or someone's a nurse or something like that. But that's what brought us uh, stateside. And prior to me bo- being born, they were lived in Hawaii. They lived in um, NorCal. And then when I was born, we lived in Idaho until I was about five. And then we moved to Bremerton, Washington in about 1985 and that's where essentially i grew up and and bremerton washington is definitely full of filipinos because bremerton's a navy a navy yeah i was gonna say that's what led me there too (laughs) but we'll get into that awesome thank you sean uh same same uh up until that scale uh ken uh with your uh, right 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 so my 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 folks were um were army brats so it kind of starts with my grandparents actually so my my on my father's side, um, my grandfather and grandmother are from uh, the island of Guam. So um, half of half of me is Chamorro, and uh, they, my grandfather joined the military, uh, traveled around the world. Eventually, same story happened with my mother's side. My mom's from uh, Zambales, uh, San Marcelino, uh, in the Philippines. Uh, my grandfather joined the military. So my parents were touring the world, and they eventually met in um, California, where they started a relationship, um, eventually moved to the Bremerton, Washington area. Uh, that's where they were married and that's where I was born. And that's where it all started. That's where the Bruce Lee flicks started. That's where the, the uh, introduction to martial arts started all in the small town of Bremerton. And that's where I crossed paths with Sean eventually. And uh, what do you say, beginning of, of junior high, not junior high, but high school. Wow. Um, I was thinking about that earlier. I don't know. Well, there's some trivia. Yeah, no. I go. I take it back. I take it back. <laughs> you got time you right now, Kuya P? Because I, I, yeah, exactly. You want to know You're exactly how I met Kenny? Let me show. Let me know the details. Give me the team. Okay. Give me the team. Okay, so both <laughs> Kenny and I played uh, little league baseball. I played for Tracyton. I think we we're. I was probably like ten or eleven. And you think about the time we're growing up, uh, late eighties, early nineties. There weren't a lot of you know Filipino kids on baseball teams. You know, so it's just like. Uh, we come across this team, and then I see this other brown kid across the way, and I'm like, oh, who's this dude? And then, uh, But we never really chopped it up or anything like that. We just knew. I was like, oh, that's the other brown guy on the team. And then the way the way my first interaction with him was I was stealing third, and I slid in the third, and the ball went to him, and he threw it as hard as he could, and it hit me in the back. <laughs> and that's, I was like, that's how I remember. that. I think that's our first, like, our very, very first interaction. And then – um, then I think at the end of that season, both of us were uh, in the all-star on our all-star teams because we were both dope. 
But I was chilling with my dad. We were having lunch and then Kenny and his dad walked by and I'm sure our dads gave each other the head nods because there's like, oh, yeah. what, what up? There's two brown, you know, and then yeah. that, that's, I think that's the first time we kind of said what's up. If that's yeah, yeah. is that what you remember, too? That's I remember. I definitely remember the look you gave me after I hit you with the baseball. <laughs> <laughs> I was Boy, like, threw hard. He threw hard. Yeah. <laughs> No, I do. I definitely remember that entire series of events. So yeah. that that's where we first crossed paths. But I, you yeah. know, we definitely became fast friends when we uh, when we met back up in high school. Yeah, so. and that's when we we actually like hung out and stuff like that. But we just knew of each other up until high right. School. The yeah. other brown dude playing baseball in the in the same uh, county or the same league. So yeah. that was the that was the, how we knew each other around around okay. the games around, around the field. Yeah. So I love it. That's amazing. That's that, that's dope. <laughs> Um, so let, let's talk about that, you know, cause when we're in these, uh, it, it, I remember for me growing up too, uh, especially around, around military areas, uh, and for Filipinos, how we got together was, you know, the Filipino community, we have like those, uh, uh, Filipino organizations. I know, especially Navy, I forgot what it was called. We're around in Charleston where I grew up before we went to Washington state. Cause I don't think I was in one when I lived in Port Orchard. Well, when my dad was retired and everything, but like, did, did y'all have like those Filipino socials, you know, where the aunties and uncles, cause that's how like a lot of people connected. Uh, but y'all yeah, met through baseball. The, did, did y'all, uh, do y'all remember going to things like that growing up with, to connect to your culture? Sean, bit? I don't know if you remember, but at the pavilion, um, in Kitsap County, we had this fairgrounds area. Um, and there was a, uh, every year, I think they would have this thing called, um, Ilakangia. And so mm -hmm. it was just this big event where all the, for me, what it was about was seeing all the different Filipino kids from the different schools. Like, wow, there's a lot yeah. of Filipinos in Kitsap County. If these are all yeah. the people that are representing for their families and coming together, it's just like, it, it, it just blew me away sometimes. Like, you know, thinking back to it, like that, those early days kind of just made me seek it a little bit more like, Oh, there's, there's, there's more, more of my people here. And, and yeah. it, it was kind of exciting to see that through those events and, you know, led by community leaders, um, you know, in Kitsap County at the time and, and kind of pushing for that, that, that type of gathering um, that, that community and showing that, you know, we're all, we're all here and we're all trying to get, you know, through this together. So it was nice to see that with, uh, with that back then, but um I don't know if there was any other any other events aside from that, um, but that was definitely a big one that was held annually um, in our town. Yeah, so, I remember there were a couple of Philam events that my parents took us. Yeah, when we were when we were kids, I remember that in elementary school. Like, I remember I performed uh, the Maglalitic. I don't know if you remember that the coconut dance. I did that when I was like nine, something like that. Yeah. So that was yeah. We my parents were we did that um, with my brother and sister for you know, early on. Um, but I, I think I really connected with like, you know, being Filipinos once I hit uh, middle school and high school, because then that's when we started, uh, you know, being around more Filipinos. And, uh, and there were like after school classes and stuff like that for, or like gatherings for the Fili Filipino kids. So gotcha. it's, yeah, that's what I remember when we were kind of connecting. I feel that, you know, I, as I was thinking about that, and cause like I said, I lived there, and I don't recall seeing it because uh, I was there in high school, like I said, 94, 95. And in Port Orchard, from what I recall, I, I was like one of the very few Pinoys that I saw. Uh, I know I remember a cat named Jeff Acoba and Victor Victoria. Those were two of my guys that I was running with. But other than that, there was like it was a very small percentage. And I think I saw or, or at least talking to other well, talking to those other two Filipino brothers was that most Filipinos were in like Silverdale, Bremerton or in Seattle. They really weren't mm. Fort Orchard area that I was at. So uh, uh, can you talk about uh, 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 how how it was to connect with the culture for you? Because I think for a lot of us, it's still ams, you know, not growing up in the Philippines. And, and we have we may have Filipino parents, but we come very westernized and very assimilated. And uh, did you experience any of that? Like, um, like it, it, I don't know if y'all recall the debut uh, classic. Uh, with starring my man Dante Bosco, I had him on. Um, yeah. That that shined a light for me and kind of like my upbringing. When you know, like you'd have friends, you bring them over, but the house smelled like patisse all over the place, and you were kind of ashamed to bring your friends around because you know your our food is different. We, the way we conduct ourselves is different. Um, mm -hmm. Did you kind of feel any of that kind of way? And 
how was it for you just kind of growing up Filipino and, and, and then also just learning more about ourselves? Um, and did you have self-hate? And, and how was that for the both of you? Because uh, to me, that and the reason I bring this up is because a lot of that is what led me to discovering the arts and finding out the stuff that I wanted to do. Because uh, it kind of went inward, you know, when you kind of get made fun of by everybody else. That, that's kind of what sparked my creativity. And I'm curious if that was also the same for you guys, but along with learning yourselves and, and our culture. And whoever wants to take it from me, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I can go. I mean, I remember early on, like elementary school, yeah, definitely. I, there, I definitely rejected being Filipino to a degree. Like I wanted to be like the white kids. I wanted to be assimilated. I wanted like, again, like you, I remember, I still remember the day I told my mom, like, I don't want to bring lunch to school because I remember I was bringing adobo and rice and the kids were like what's that what are you eating there and then you know thinking back I'm sure that was like you know a pivotal point for my mom to hear that you know but and I, I think there's an understanding too because there's like there was a desire for our kid their kids to assimilate but then how do you find that maintain that balance of maintaining your heritage and also assimilating you know so I remember that early on and then again going back to like uh, when I kind of merged into middle school, that's kind of when I returned to like, you know, kind of identifying being Filipino and then hanging out with more Filipino people and like finding those common grounds with them. You know, it's like, I, I, and I was like, again, I was, I'm not rejecting white people at the time, but I was just like, it was something that I knew was missing growing, you know, from like my elementary years, you know, I don't know, Kenny, were you, did you, was that something like that you experienced? Well, I, I definitely remember um, in elementary school looking around and all the kids were white and brunette or blonde. And I, I thought because the, the funny kid or the class clown or the popular kid was white and had blonde hair, that that was probably the reason. Or I didn't know. Like, I was like, well, that's not that doesn't look like me. The funny thing is, is I, I grew up in a pretty diverse with a di pretty, pretty diverse set of cousins. I, I grew up around half Puerto Rican, half Mexican white african-american japanese like all these different cultures so i never really never really made that like distinction like oh it's a specific way you look is the way you're going to be treated because as cousins we all just play together and you get into a system like like you know like school and you see that in my class anyways um in bremerton uh, a lot of the a lot of the kids around me were white um and it wasn't like sean until i got to junior high when he's kind of the, the i started to see more brown folk, Pacific Islanders, Filipinos, Chinese. So then I was, I kind of got, got drawn to that because there was a, there was some familiarity that, that draws you to it. And there's kind of a, that's kind of the opening. That's the entrance to potential having some commonalities because at least from a distance, you're, you're kind of looking at who looks like you, who, who, who acts a little bit like me. And so there's not, there's that, there's that moment where, you feel a little bit more confident approaching and making friends in that way because you you're anticipating some sort of commonality in, in that sense because of appearance. So it definitely played a role in, in making friends and, and seeking out like who I would hang out with kind of at an early age, um, whether that's a good or a bad thing. It, it definitely, the contrast between my elementary school and moving into junior high and high school played a big role in the friends that I've kept today. So um, for whatever it's worth, yeah, I, I definitely noticed um, it did it did do things to the way I thought about my own my own skin color. Definitely, awesome guys. Thank you for sharing that. And, and again, we say this and we talk on this, and, and I like to give that out to the to our viewers because that you know we all go through it, and and, and but it's taking that and, and uh, evolving that into a strength uh, and, and helping us find ourselves. So like. Uh, uh, let's move it into middle school, high school. Uh, and, and one of the things when I was going through that type of bullying and poor orchard, and I have a whole story to tell that if you watch our second episode, I talked about my, my, my second week living in Port Orchard to go play some basketball. And I had a bunch of guys mess with me and that became a whole incident. But anyway, um, that, that's just, it, it's, it's life. Um, so what they want me to do is learn martial arts. And uh, so I'm curious, uh, what were some of the hobbies uh, that y'all got into uh, going from middle school, high school uh, that might be indicators of what you would later get into? Or were they not? Was it totally left field? Uh, what were some of the stuff you guys were both into uh, middle school, high school uh, age? I, 
Definitely. In, in, in middle school, I, I had already been kind of taking Kung Fu for a few years but at that point. So by the time I was in junior high, I had already kind of made that, made that part of who I was. I was already motivated and, and practicing regularly. And I mean, it kind of goes back before that with, with being just my, my father being a huge fanatic of Bruce Lee, introducing that to me. And it just, I just took it another, another level. Uh, further with uh, actually taking up martial arts. So I took that with me all the way through junior high um, and into, into high school, even when, when I, again, when I met up with Sean, but I think the, the martial arts also led us into looking for inspiration. And that inspiration came through film, came through, you know, watching Bruce Lee movies, watching Jackie Chan movies, Jet Li, you know, during that era, the, the late the mid, 90s late 90s there was some amazing stuff coming out of hong kong and, and china so we were kind of getting that wave of drunken master 2 and once upon a time in china and all the classics that make up kind of like what we consider the classics today you know of that that golden era of, of hong kong action cinema so that definitely informed it and i think for me anyways i i, I believe it was similar with sean but when we would watch jackie chan movies there was something about the process and how he would reveal the filmmaking process at the end of his movies. And it kind of showed, it kind of pulled the, the curtains back and said, hey, this isn't all just happen in one take. We, we do this over and over again. There's, there's all kinds of stuff. There's all kinds of teams that, that make this happen. It's not just Jackie and an opponent and they fight and that's, that's how it happens. It's, it's just kind of like open up a whole new world of, of uh, creativity to us that we, I think just drew us in and was like, hey, let's try that next weekend. And we would just grab our, you know, our dad's camcorders and, and try to basically copy what we saw um, Jackie do. So that, that's kind of what led us into, I, I think that that's what kind of carried me um, through high school in terms of like my creative expression and, and just having something fun to do on the weekend was actually more about hanging out with Sean and, and the homies and making something fun for us to laugh at, you know, at the end of the night versus like, I guess, you know, going out and partying or whatever. So that was kind of our way to get together and hang out. So I love that you pointed that out before you come in, Sean. I, I would always attribute thriller, the making of thriller, my, Michael oh, yeah. Jackson's thriller. That is what kind of like got me into filmmaking, which it did, because I just love the special effects, everything about the making of thriller. Um, but it was also those Jackie Chan movies. You totally reminded me of that fact of when he does kind of deconstruct and break that down all down. Oh, I love that, man. Now now I've, I want to watch my old Jackie Chan flicks to, to peep that because I do remember that energy and just that yeah. behind the scenes that, that just made me love filmmaking. Uh, so, Sean, uh, to you. Yeah, so we touched on it earlier how baseball was kind of my thing from, like, uh, elementary and into, like, start of middle school. And then, like, I think around eighth grade is when I kind of discovered my dad's video camera. And I just um, – and it wasn't really necessary thinking about filmmaking at the time. I just like recording stuff. I'm like, I, I'd – uh, like at the end of the school year, I'd take it to classes and just record friends and just play with and play with it that way. And then and then it started to um, once I started being hanging out with Kenny, that's when we started, you know, hey, I got a camera. My, his dad had a camera and we just started play, playing with it that way, you know, and Bruce Lee, just like anyone growing up in the 80s, 70s or 80s is like, that's what got me into martial arts film and martial arts films. My brother was the one who would uh, watch it with me on the weekends and stuff like that when we weren't watching like WWF, you know? So, <laughs> so like, that's how, like, that's how I got into, uh, that was the gateway drug to, to Kung Fu movies, you know, and it was Bruce Lee or nothing, you know? And then there was like, um, like some American Ninja movies and stuff like that. That kind of got us, you know, got us a little more taste. And then Kenny is really the one that got me into Jackie Chan, you know, like he, he had like, he had the mixtapes, dude. Like he had the one that <laughs> nobody knew about. And I was like, oh, yes. that opened my eyes to that world. Cause again, it was like, oh yeah, it's like, yeah, it's everything you loved about Bruce Lee with Kung Fu, but like it was a different, it was a different flavor on it, you know? Cause we all know that Bruce Lee was a huge inspiration to Jackie, but also Jackie wanted to be himself and he definitely did, you know? So that's like, again, and then we seeing that and getting tape after tape, Drunken Master 2 was like, that was, that was like the epitome of like, you know, Kung Fu movies for me. And I got that from Kenny, you know? So it's like, um, that's, and then we just started emulating it. You know, Kenny was like, Hey, do this, do this. And we, and you think about the period that we were doing it, it was like 1997, 1998. 
Nobody had, you know, uh, IMAX back then. Nobody, there's no real nonlinear editing. I, we, were, we were doing that in camera, dude. Like, all right. And, and he'd put me in this. I got no muscle <laughs> background. I just like, you know, just watch the movies and wanted to, you know, be a part of it. And he'd be like, all right, throw a punch. And he'd, we'd show back. We'd literally go move for move from a fight scene. He analyzed it and broke it down. All right, you throw a punch. I'll throw a punch. You dodge, you know. And then we'd cut, turn the camera around you know, do the coverage and, you know, and, and it, it, it flowed, you know, like with zero, like all in camera editing, like that was, that was our start. And that was like our start into actual filmmaking, I think. And then again, like Kenny mentioned, that's where we were like, okay, we started getting more serious. We were like, Oh, let's try and think of some stories and like, let's get friends and put them in it. And, and then that's how we spent like Friday, Saturday nights, you know, like just playing with video cameras. Man, who would have thought from then to now with paper tigers y'all i just love that man it's beautiful because i remember doing that with my people's man and just that's to me i think important because you kind of learned filmmaking too in a, in a small sense man that even these young cats they don't understand uh to really you know get it get it to its roots man uh i just think that's beautiful um i love that um i know y'all were, were doing a little bit of jackass stuff because if you're around the same time frame i was doing that stuff too. There's there's a little bit of jackass style action. I don't know. You, 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 you probably don't want to admit it. No, uh, we did. I mean, shout out, to Lawrence, <laughs> shout out to Lawrence Panera, the homie. That's that was he was our jackass star. So like there he was go. he was <laughs> also in our video. So yeah, for Hell sure. Yeah, yeah, he was in that slap shot or when I think I watched earlier. Snap shot, yes. right. yeah, yeah, that was nice. Lawrence. Homie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to him, man. That's beautiful. Uh, before we get out of high school, man, into college and, and moving on. Uh, what is something that your your parents uh, you'd be afraid your parents to tell us if you want to tell us that? I, I, you know, I thought I'd try that. You know, is there something you, you're willing to give away before your parents tell it to us, or what, what do you think they would want to tell us about you individually? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that, that really is a question for them. I just yeah. You don't think they throw shade on you? Do you think they <laughs> you know, they'd be nice about you? I think, nice. I, think I think so at this point i think 20 point, years ago yeah, yeah, they, yeah i think my dad would say some mean you know <laughs> some mean stuff back in the day but i think right now like yeah i don't All know right. that's a hard one that's definitely no hard. worries no worries you know I, I try to reach with that one a little bit so <laughs> uh with uh you know how we are how, how we have you know our, our asian parents man uh for for most of us or it seems like the the majority that i've seen doing this while doing this show um, and just a stereotype in general, uh, we kind of get pushed. And I think that's just because of uh, their journey to come to the U.S. and assimilation and, and just wanting the better for us. Uh, when, we, when it comes time to graduate, you know, we, while we may have a love for the arts, we get pushed more so to doctor, lawyer, accountant, engineer. Uh, what was that like for you when it came to that point? You're getting ready to graduate high school. Did you get that same push? And, and, and what avenue did you go uh, leading then into college? Uh, let me pass it to Ken uh, and then to Sean on this one. Well, I think we, I think Sean and I kind of share a similar um, kind of entry to the, to the arts in terms of like schooling and higher learning. But um, the funny thing is, is like in, during high school, I, I'd say maybe junior, halfway through junior year and definitely all through senior um, before leaving for college, all I could think about was making movies with, the friends on the weekends. All I could think about was fight choreography. All I could think about was how to do my version of Fist of Legend or Drunken Master 2 or whatever it is that was on my mind. So my mind was already drifting from, you know, kind of this the academics and all the sciences and all the stuff that I was sort of kind of uh, putting in front of my parents as, yeah, I'm following the path of going to 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 the university and, and that's, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the four-year thing and it is what it is. But um, I remember, I remember um, I got accepted to Washington State University and I was already starting to fill out the paperwork and everything. But at the same time, I was doing research on art schools um, because I really wanted to go to film school. So um, I remember uh, very specifically or very vividly the, the night that um, I announced to my parents that I didn't want to go to the university. I wanted to go to art school and it kind of just blew their minds. And they didn't know what to say to me. I had all this information printed out. I did all my research about the schools that, you know, I thought might be a good option for me. And I basically said, I don't want to go to the university. I want to go to 
I want to go to art school. And so that was kind of a, a shock to my parents. And I eventually talked them into uh, letting me go. And um, in 2001, I moved to San Francisco and started um, attending the Academy of Art College at the time. But the thing is, is I didn't go there for film. I went there for, um, it's called New Media Design, which was kind of, for me, it was attractive because it had, it was, it kind of packaged up all these things, all these different facets of kind of the marketing and creative that goes into potentially making content at the time. So it was kind of a multimedia program. So there was web design, there was video editing, there was everything, everything that um, encompasses kind of promoting your product. So I went down there with that kind of like, kind of hoping to give my parents a little bit of confidence in the career path that I chose in design. Um, but all the, all the while, I was also making movies on the side out in the Bay with some other friends that I met eventually. Um, and they're known by, um, previously known by the, the independent stunt team named Zero Gravity. So that's when I intercepted with, with those fellas down there. So leaving high school um, or leaving, leaving Bremerton and going to SF was definitely a transition of like letting, the, letting my family and the people around me know that I'm pivoting. And I'm definitely, I'm going all in into the arts. So it was a, it was a tough, um, it was a tough conversation to have with the folks, but um, I mean, if I didn't have it, we wouldn't have this. So this is, you know, like that, that was a, it was a big turning point in my, in my life. So um, thankfully uh, I followed through and I had the courage to speak up when it was important to. Love it. That's beautiful, man. That's brave, man. That's, that's, that's brave. It's hard. I mean, my oh, mom, I can imagine. Yeah, she, I mean, I without the chancleta, that. no, you can't do this. <laughs> I can still feel the way she looked at me, man. To, to this I, day, I, yeah, I bet, <laughs> bro. It's, no. it's still, I can still feel it. Well, it was all worth it, man. It's all worth yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Sean, uh, share yours if you don't mind. Yeah. So coming out of high school, like I, I, I was in no rush. Like I, I. I was, my grades were good and I had a lot of letters from schools and like, I honestly didn't pursue them. I didn't open, like, I remember getting stacks and stacks of letters from all these different schools, but I knew like halfway through my senior year that I, I wasn't sure where I wanted to go and I didn't really want to waste time or money, um, like pursuing a degree or enrolling in a, in a college that I didn't really where I had no direction at the time. So I didn't open a single one of those letters, you know, and I just knew that like, you know, I'll just take my time and I'll take all um, like, I went to uh, city college up in Bellevue, Washington and like, and then kind of figure out from there and get, you know, I wanted to get my AA and then, and then pursue university after that. So, um, so I did. So uh, 2000, so 19, so 1999, 2000, so I moved to Seattle and I was take you know, enrolled at a city college there. And I ended up get, getting a job, a government job with U.S. Customs, like an entry-level job. And uh, I was there uh, for like a year or two and there was room to grow there. Like it was like, it was like entry-level, but like once you're in, like you can easily just work your way up. And my dad was stoked about that. You know, dad, my dad coming from, you know, the military side too. So I was doing that only, you know, really to talk, you know, by the time and just make money. Um, but still not really knowing where school, what, where I was going to go with school. And then Kenny, who, you know, hit up the Academy of Art, he was like, yo, uh, there's a film program here. You should like check it out. And I was like, oh, cool. Yeah, maybe. And then, so I flew down to the Bay and my sister was living there at the time and we did the school tour and like, um, I kind of immediately knew that's kind of what I wanted to do. So, um, so then I moved out of my apartment in Seattle, moved back to my house with my parents and like continued working at U.S. Customs and then started saving up money. And then I eventually had to tell my dad, I was like, yo, I think I'm going to move to San Francisco. Uh, and he's like, for what? And then I was like, yeah, I want to go to art school. And then he's just like, huh. And then, uh, um, and then he's like, so you're going to leave, you're going to leave U.S. Customs. I was like, yeah. He's like, and then he got pissed. I'll be honest. He got pissed. He's like, yeah. why? Like you have a future here. You're like, you're like, you even like you're 19 years old and you're in with you know, a company that you can grow. And like, why are you throwing this away? And, and you know, at the time, he, I think he honestly just, you know, saw what we were doing as a hobby and didn't really see it. Of course, as a Filipino parent, uh, not really seeing the arts as a viable 
you know, future. So like he was, my dad was always a hard ass and he was hard on me about it. And he like really showed that he didn't want me to go. Uh, my mom was, she's always supportive. She was always like, okay, if that's what you want to do, you know, I believe that you, you can do it and I know it'll make you happy. So um, yeah, she was, she was supportive from, from the start of that. Um, but yeah, it was rough with my dad. Like, you know, when I left, he didn't even say goodbye. That was like, that was, you know, but, uh, but, you know, flash forward, you know, for a few years into that, he, he eventually saw that it was like, okay, this, there is a future here. And he really is passionate. I think it was really just like one, there's a, the protective side of it. Like, you know, like, dude, I don't, I don't know what this is. Like, I'm very unfamiliar with that industry. Like that's, you know, there's doctor, there's lawyer, there's nurse, you know, that's, yeah, that's the future. That's where you have that future. But like a filmmaker, like what, what the hell is a cinematographer, you know, like, yeah, I get it. Like at a time, you know, I was like, whatever dad, you know, you don't understand me, but blah, blah. there's that resistance. But like, yeah. Now thinking back, like, yeah, I, I, I fully understand why he had that position because honestly it was for my best, you know, for what he thought was my best interest, you know? So I get it. I totally get it. And then like now, you know, 16 years in the business, he's I've totally accepted it and like knows that this was, you know, the right thing for me to do. So, but yeah, it was, it was tough, you know? Yeah. We both had some tough parents, you know? But, I feel that, man. Yeah, yeah, it's it's hard getting on those starting blocks, man, to 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 follow and pursue your dream. But you, if you want it, you got it. You, we all know you got to go for it. And I applaud you guys for having the courage because a lot of us aren't, you know, ready to to to, to resist and, and and challenge and, and go for it. So, man, you know, uh, uh, and thing and and just like you said, I think we all know it's out of love that which is why and. The, uh, that they want us to kind of stay in something familiar to them. But yeah, it, they never said, you know, things were going to be easy, you know, like, you know, with, with life and everything. So uh, I, I thank y'all for sharing that in, in, in uh, with, with everyone. So, so we, 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 we've crossed that hurdle. We're all in San Francisco, both y'all uh, back together in a way. Uh, did, did, did like who hit up who? Yo, I'm, I'm here. Yo, I'm in the Bay. I'm here in the Bay. What? You in the Bay? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> how how was that? And, and let's get into this in building w with the arts, man, in, in the Bay. Yeah, I mean, Kenny Kenny was down there first, so he was a sem semester. I think one semester ahead of me. This one, but like man. he knew where where everything was. And as soon as I got down, he's like, "I'm gonna show you how to ride the Bart." First stop is I'm gonna introduce you to a Mission Burrito. And I, was <laughs> like, I had no idea what I was in for, and that was like mind blowing. Like Bay Area Mission Burritos. If y'all haven't had one, like you guys. <laughs> You guys are missing out. So yeah, I was like, that's that is a very poignant memory of like my intro of like, you know, obviously like I'm 19, 20 years old. Like this is my first time out of the small town I grew up in. I'm in a big city. Yeah. So that's like that was the one of the first things that you know Kenny Kenny took me to. And then he just showed me around the city and that was it, you know. It was so I was so pumped to like find out he was coming and, and I just I couldn't wait. You know, it's just like I couldn't wait to share all the stuff that I had discovered. You know, it's just like two boys from Bremerton and here we are in the big city, you know, like San Francisco, everything is here, whatever you want. And I just, it was just so, uh, it was so neat to have your friend in a new, you know, in a new city doing it and about to embark on this experience together. And we're going to try to figure out what it is we want to do with the, with this passion and this, and this, these whatever stories and art that we have inside of us to express. And, and it was just a really cool place to be in the early 2000s. I think when we, when we arrived and we met so many amazing people in San Francisco, um, uh, like some of my best memories. I mean, I met my wife now wife there in San Francisco. So it's, there's so much that's rooted in those early days. Um, and I think that that time together in SF kind of like, it just formed another layer of friendship with, you know, and, and a bond between Sean and I to, you know, it's just like, I tell this to other people. I don't, you know, obviously I don't tell it to Sean, but like, you know, when you have that kind of friend, you can, you know, it's not, it's not that you intend to, but you can go months without speaking to them, but you can also just all of a sudden have the blue text. And it's like, we were just talking or you can meet up somewhere at dinner after not seeing them for the entire lockdown and feel like everything's, you know, like we didn't miss a beat. So that you have those, those people in your life that you stick close to. And, and we just happen to have, you know, gone on this, you know, these, these 
creative and just life changing um, pursuits together, you know, either parallel or helping each other through things. So that that really informed a lot of the way that we'll eventually get to, but just the, the working style that we were eventually able to hone in on when we, um, whenever we collaborate, whether it was the Paper Tigers or even projects prior to that. So that openness and that that ability to just kind of like grow together really, really is a, is a special thing to lean on and to use um, when it's time to be, you know, at your most creative. So it's, it's always great, good to have a team that you trust and, and that you've been around and you know for, you've known for so many years. So that's really where I feel like the strength of our collaboration comes from, which is friendship. Hell yeah. I love that, man. That's absolutely beautiful. And real talk, you made me want to dial up my boys right now. Like, man, yo, remember <laughs> this? I love yeah. that, man. That's beautiful, man. That's, that's real cool. you right there. Um, yeah. so, so, uh, we're in, we're, we're now in our school, man. We're all learning. We're all together kind of vibing, uh, before we start like making some films together uh, here and there, like, uh, Swit, I'm going to mess up the name again. I'm I, it's, it's late. Uh, uh slap shot or what, what was it? Snapshot. Snapshot. Yeah. Um, what were some of the first lessons learned? You know, so now you kind of did it on your own as, as youngsters. And I don't know if you did a couple classes here in high school, although I'm sure it was few and far between in high school, but now you're getting like real training because you're in art school. Mm -hmm. Uh, what was like a major difference or what, what were some of the, uh, uh what were the things that kind of fully got realized learning film and, and learning the arts now in this professional setting that uh, changed things or just made you look at uh, the art form differently um, when, now that you're in school and you're, you're going through it and, and you're wanting to make this a profession? Oh, under, like understanding the dynamics of like just a set was like kind of eye opening because honestly, we were very informal, self-taught and like it was just friends with the camera. And then understanding like protocol and like how things work and like, um, you know, from pre-production to production to post-production, like all those steps, those are all invaluable. And, you know, as a filmmaker, because like, again, we didn't have any kind of post in while we were in high school. Like we didn't really, we barely knew how to edit anything, you know? Um, so like having um, an appreciation for editing was, was huge because like, honestly, that's what I originally wanted to do, uh, at the academy it was like uh my emphasis was going to be on editing until i got onto a set and then i, I worked with uh on a, a good friend's short film he was my roommate at the time and uh his cinematographer was like like the cool it was like seeing him work was like the coolest thing ever one he was like a super nice person and like ran a set like perfectly like it was insane and we were all still film students you know like um but like that kind of opened my eyes like seeing how the collaboration is on set versus like just editing in a dark room by herself. Like I, I, it's a great, don't get me wrong. Cause it's like, it's a, it's an amazing craft. And I honestly think I was pretty good at editing, but I, you know, there was more of a calling to be on set and interacting with more people and like being more of that process. And I think that brought me back to like what we were doing with our dad's cameras and having control of like what's in the frame, you know? So that's kind of, so like, I think two years into the, into that is when I shifted my emphasis to cinematography and started taking more, cinematography classes and learning more about actual film too you know so Definitely. yeah I how about you Ken? Things, yeah yeah um you know it's not only being in sf but being in an art school there's this there's this intersection of creativity and and all kinds of people from all kinds of walks of life and i think it's it was such a an amazing opportunity to talk to new people about their perspective on art whether it was graphic design uh fashion photography filmmaking illustration like so we had access to all of that and you can go into any of the different buildings and see illustration work you can go into different buildings and see um different types of media and i think that exposure and just to kind of feel that you were in good company and people were putting their work out there inspired you to do that for whatever it was you were studying so seeing that excellence that's that was surrounded that you were surrounded by uh, kind of really gave a lot of motivation during that era of growth. Um, but to add to what Sean said, I think the collaborating um, and meeting all these new people and kind of working together on projects also taught you about account accountability and just doing what you say, you know, whatever you say you're going to do and, and just showing up for the team, all that stuff kind of like, that was kind of the early days of really understanding that you're part of a team and it's not your project, it's our project. And um, 
kind of opened my eyes up a little bit more on a different way to collaborate. And it was out of my comfort zone because not it's not the homies, you know, like you got to work with a guy that you might not really, you may not go and have a burrito with or a beer with, you know, this is just a dude you have to work with, but you have to make it work. Um, and just learning that kind of learning how to deal with that at that age, um, especially coming in with all these ideas and you, you think you're going to do it your way. There's a lot of different ways. And I think that was an important thing to see once we got to art school, like we thought we were dope, but there's a lot of dope artists out there, you know, it kind of, in one way it's intimidating, but in more ways it was inspiring. Yeah. Awesome. And the Academy was a fun era. I mean, I really, I, I, I'm, I, I have such good memories of, of the, the years that we, we were all in the city before we all kind of split off and got day job or, you know, our <laughs> graduated and, and everything. Yeah. Cause there was still a bit of a freedom there where you're kind of in between, you know, like, Oh, we're doing the thing, but we're not really doing the thing. We're learning how to do the thing. So that was a fun era to just to be in that explorative kind of mindset. Awesome. Did for both of you guys, for while you were in school, sometimes it can make you change your opinion on things. Uh, I, well, knowing that there's paper tigers, it obviously didn't. You still kept it up. But was, were, were there like any indicators that, you know, that maybe I made the wrong choice or was it no? You, you or Did it get hard and then you had to fall in love with it again or it just just you, you transitioned and you just kept it moving? Uh, was it was that for either of you guys? Did you uh, have like a change in heart? Or like all of a sudden, man, I should have kept that customs job, you know? For you, Sean, or you're like, hell no. I, I nah, worked too hard to I get here. Never, I'm not <laughs> done with that. This is what I'm doing. You know, what hey, I'm saying? No, no knock on customs. It was it just wasn't for me. Got it. Um, no, I mean, like, I think there's a point where like the industry, yeah, definitely gets hard. Like, yeah, that like again, like that freedom we had of being in school and still learning how to do it, like mm -hmm. that's like you can't unmatch that you can't match that because like now like when you're a professional like you have to be something you know like this is it's now like how you kind of feed yourself and pay your rent and stuff like that so um i've been a camera assistant for 16 years a focus puller so there's a point in like 2008 2009 i think it was kind of like so that's three years into the business so i'm still trying to get a foothold as a camera person you know in la and that was like the rider strike was 2007, 2008. So like that trickled down to everybody. So there was, there's a, there's like a good two, you know, a month and a half, two months of like the phone didn't ring. So there was no work. And I was just like, Whoa, what am I, what am I doing? And then like, you know, the bank account was emptying and I was yeah. just like, there was a, yeah, there was a point where like one night I was like, Oh, I think maybe my dad was right. You know, like it was, it was rough. It was like, I was like, man, it, I don't know when the phone's going to ring. I don't know when the next project's going to happen. And uh, it eventually did and like, and bounced back from it and haven't looked back since. But like, I remember that. I remember waking up in the middle of the night, you know, I was like, am I going to make rent next, next month? Because I haven't worked in a month or two, two months, you know? So, but then again, then the calls came back and, you know, work came back and, and just got really busy and honestly still haven't, haven't looked back. So. I do remember that was tough. Yeah. Was really tough. Yeah. So let's get into this after college, after art school, we're now getting into the trade again in the business. And, and like you said, you're, you know, that was happening and, you know, like four to five years after that, um, you know, now finding ourselves in our career, uh, getting, uh, trying to become a filmmaker uh, as an actor you know i'm and we, i think you can you're you're dabbling with the acting side more so the as sean was you know with with being on crew um you know we have uh, at the time sag after uh, i think i was in after first and then i later joined sag and then now it's a one union uh i'm uh, on crew side I, I don't know if you have like the same unions uh, on crew uh you know we're still iotsi yeah um, IOTC, that's local, what it yeah is. i'm local yeah Sikon, yeah, yeah. So like, like helping you find work. So what was that like for you both? You know, you, you got your, your, your degrees, you, you were, we're all schooled up. How was it now trying to break in and, and finding that foothold? And like you said, uh, for you with being at Sean, you know, you, you get some calls that slow down because of what was happening with the industry mm -hmm. uh, and, and then, you know, getting a foothold again. Uh, and for you, Ken, uh, with what you, uh, you know, 
uh, uh, did you more so pursue uh, like like being in front of the camera as a choreographer or, or or what exactly what it was? How did you? Because I know you got that. You said the new media training. I think is what you you were pursuing at first, right? Right. right. So when I right, exactly. So when I got to the academy, the whole idea was to do new media, kind of as a disguise to still continue to make to, to make movies because we had video editing classes and videography classes within the, within the major. So I was like, this, this, this kind of does both. It makes mom and dad happy, but it also keeps me close to, you know, this medium that I'm, I'm so passionate about. So what happened was, is I ended up falling in love with graphic design and I ended up pursuing that as a career right out of school. So I, I fell right into a, a handful of graphic design gigs around the city um, which eventually led me to working for Apple. Um, so that was a, a huge deal for me because, you know, um, working in design and working at Apple is kind of one of the, the highest I can, I feel I can go, you know, in terms of like career path and, and all that. So in pursuing design in general, but the thing that kept me close was friends like Sean. Um, I have some other friends that, that um, were making martial art movies in the Bay area as well. Um, and Bao, Bao was constantly chipping away at his craft and coming up with stories to tell. And because I was so passionate from an early age and I knew that no matter what these guys did, if they called on me, I would just jump to it. And it's been like that since, since ever since. I mean, it, the, 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 the energy behind it is, is very similar to how we would call each other on the weekend and say, are you down to come out and film? Now we have to you know, square it away with the wife. We got to square it away with the work and get some vacation days and figure out how it's all going to work and how the monies are going to work and all that. But it's the same kind of feeling, you know, when, when Bao calls or if, if any of my friends call, they want to do something with the camera, I'm, I'm down. So I've kind of lived like a very untraditional uh, parallel to the film world where I was always working on design, but all the things that I did in design were also influenced in the way that I was approaching my creative. Um, and when it came to action design or choreography, because design is design, you can approach it the same way with the same principles. So I definitely took all my learnings from Apple or from whatever jobs I had, just being a graphic designer and applying that to flight choreography. And even just dissecting a scene, if I, if I had a couple of lines, it's just kind of, I would get into it and I would try to figure out all the different angles and all the different solutions and have all the different answers for the director. So I would approach everything with a designer's eye. So going into the career as, as a designer definitely influenced everything we see um, that we captured in the paper tiger. So it's, it's all been kind of a parallel journey. Um, and again, I, I credit my, my friends for keeping me close during this entire progress uh, process, because if it wasn't for them to continue pushing and pursuing their, you know, their, their dreams and their, their, you know, trying to tell their stories. Um, I don't know if I would have had the motivation to do it on my own. I mean, the thing that really draws me to, to filmmaking now that I, you know, I've been asked this question a few times is, is the camaraderie and is the collaborative, you know, set it's being together. It's, it's laughing. It's, it's just being together on set. Really. That's, I, I crave it. When we were on set on the paper tigers, um, it was just like, it was like a family atmosphere. It was like a daily dose of just really positive vibes. And when you're around like-minded creative people, like you're, it just kind of sucks you in and you crave it. So knowing that this team, this crew, Sean, Bao, and everybody else involved, Alan, Michael, Yuji, Dan, this whole crew that built and fought for Paper Tigers is the team that I've been riding with, you know, this whole time and they've kept me close. So. I, it's a testament to the friendships that we have and we've made over the years, but really that's, that's kind of been my journey is staying close while also perfecting the dip, you know, another craft, if you will. So yeah, yeah that's, it's kind of a unique way to, to kind of sort of fall sideways into it, but that's kind of how it happened for me. It's just, yeah. it's just being there at the right time and sticking close and the right time has been a long time. So that's, that's the other way to look at it. Right. So nah, I feel that. No, nah, I love that, man. And just actually be honest, man, listen to both y'all and, and just your stories thus far, man. That's a film in itself, y'all. I got to tell y'all, I love the fact that y'all got together playing baseball. That story and the, the, some my boy got hit behind his back. What? 
opera mm -hmm. and then and then meeting together in college <laughs> then you you you, you know uh, well in in high school and then you venture off you both find yourselves together in art school yo that's a film bro like i i don't know who's putting pen to pad right now but like whoever's gonna watch <laughs> this like I, that that's that's something right there man I, I love it it's beautiful um so uh like i said i found your youtube ken and, mm. and peep snapshot <laughs> so that was like nine years ago so was that in like that that slow time and, and then sean you you had put, you y'all got together you were you started doing films again uh you know now that you're in the bay um and, and i was that doing like some of the slowdown before things started get picking up but like you know that you're dabbling a little bit of that like pre paper tigers then leading you know and then we can get lead into how that came along because it took 10 years for that to come about uh into the world well, Snapshot, we were I, we were both still enrolled at the Academy. So this okay. was more than 10 years ago. Yeah, Snapshot was 2002. That's okay. Funny. So that was that was one of my, that was a, a final project for one of my classes. So <laughs> it was, it was my, I think it was my Cine 2 class that so we were required to shoot on 16 mil color. Okay. So that might have been my, one of my first time shooting color film. So, and then it was just like, all right, this is what we're here for. Like, let's show them what we can do. So, yeah, was, so I called them. So Kenny, you know, and then I called up Lawrence. Lawrence was living in San Diego at the time, and he came up. It was like, it was like that, like what Kenny just talked about. It's like, yo, you down? I got this weekend. Let's shoot. And it's oh, like, yeah. all right, come up. And then uh, Lawrence crashed at my place, and I think we shot it over two weekends. I think maybe I don't know. It was so long ago, but like, yeah, that was like one of the biggest films I ever, you know, did, and I, you know financed it on my own and like you know had to rent equipment and like learn how to do stuff like that like it was a big deal and oh, yeah. uh and of course yeah kenny and and lawrence were both a part of it because it was like that's what we you know that's what we were trying to do so that, that that's that was just like our next like our next step of of you know the journey so every step you know like i just to add to that to watch to watch sean um work in that in that way and that new capacity was just kind of like oh oh we're, we're doing it like we're, we're we're getting better and you could see it now like this isn't um a vhsc or yeah, a, I, you know now that was, transition was, of learning right oh yeah. man and yeah. we're applying all these things and um i'd like to think just the way we work sean was uh, so shorthand and may have impressed just i think people looking in that were maybe your classmates who just the way we worked was so quick because we had done so much training Mm -hmm. back up in Bremerton you know what I mean like like to Sean's earlier point in camera editing we already knew how to shoot and capture you know we knew what angles we wanted um Sean's been on that game since day one you know like copying Jackie's framing and that's how we learn how to frame quality fight scenes um it, it came from that early study so by the time we got onto you know a project like Snapshot it really felt like it was like another level that we hit you know, it was like we got, we broke through, we got more, um, uh, I don't know, just everything just went up from there. It just felt like, okay, we're really starting to do the thing that we set out to do. And it was, it was a very small project. I don't know, was it like five minutes, six minutes long or something, or yeah, I don't even know. Yeah, yeah. But it was just, it was so different. It just felt so polished at the time. At the time it was film. It was like, it, it just felt really good to be in the space. Um, when when Sean came out with the final edit, I was just like, I was so proud of the of the team that worked on it, and oh, yeah. and that it came from this like kind of core group from from Bremerton. You know, this is just the boys doing the thing with bigger wow. tools, bigger you know, bigger toys. Yeah. So, I love it, man. I love it. So years in, you're doing graphic design, uh, Sean. You the you're not doing quite a bit of films, man. I saw your your IMDb, man. Uh, some of the different projects you've been working on. Uh, but here comes Paper Tigers. Uh, how did this happen? Who who first hit who up? And then to reunite you guys, the, the, these Bremerton boys. So did you did you all know Bao in Bremerton? How, where did how did Bao come into this picture? And then forming uh, the Paper Tigers, man. Funny Let's story. So I don't know. Can you want to start off? You on me? Uh, you, you, uh, this this story is rooted in your family, so it definitely comes from from you. So okay, so we gotta jump. Friend. So we gotta jump back back to 1999, 98 maybe. Yeah. Um, so again, Kenny and I were making these kung fu movies with a view camera, and then like part of my childhood was growing up with my cousins over the weekend, 
and I'd stay out in Seattle, out in Shoreline, my cousin Eric and Janelle, I would stay at their house for the weekends. And then like, you know, we'd show them the, pro- I'd show them the projects that we were making, these little Kung Fu movies. And we even put Eric into them. Like my cousin, like Harry, who knew, who had no, no, no idea how to fight either, but like, we just had fun playing with the video cameras. So um, Eric is going to uh, Shorewood High School up in Shoreline. And he's like, yo, that's funny. You guys do these uh, Kung Fu movies because there's this kid named Bao that goes to my high school. He's actually the ASB. I think he was the, the president of his school. Yeah. So and he, he made a whole movie. I was like, <laughs> what? Because like you think about Kenny and I, we never made full movies. We were like just a reason to fight dudes chasing each other. And then we fight. And then right. like, you know, our story was whatever. And then I was like, Oh, I got to see this movie. And it was like, this, he can't be as dope as us. So this is what we do. This is our thing. Yeah, and yeah. You know, apparently Bao gave my cousin, let him borrow it. And he told him not to copy it, but he copied it anyway or something like that. So he, you know, smuggled it to us and we were like, okay. Okay. So like, <laughs> can you could read like, Bao had kung fu training and like because Bao put himself in the movie. He he was he was the one to do the choreo and performing and he was fighting kids that he went to high school with that had no martial arts training either. And the funny thing about this whole movie was like because Bao was the president the US ASB president, he forced the school to have a film festival. You know, what he used he that abuse of power, he made them have a film <laughs> festival just so he could showcase his movie. Oh, man. so and then that's how it, and then again, that movie ended up in our lab. And we're like, OK, so we got to meet this dude because, OK, we one, we don't hate him because, OK, we we have a respect for him now because initially that gut feeling is like, no, 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 that's what yeah. we do. Whatever, fuck it, you know, whatever this dude does, it's not as good as us. And then we oh, saw it. it. Yeah, oh, yeah. OK, OK, there's respect there. And then we we eventually linked up. So yeah. and, and I, I honestly don't remember the first actual inner like meet up do you no it's kind of it's kind of hazy with like the actual link up it yeah. just it was kind of an, a gradual phone call across the puget sound every once mm-hmm. in a while to come over and work on each other's projects i don't know when it clicked and we were like oh we're kind of a squad now like this is the new crew yeah because um, i remember when we we're when we were doing that car mount thing with uh with peter's car bow came across on the ferry for that so yeah. that may have been the first time. So that so that may have been our first time working together. But we knew like this was something that we wanted to continue. Um, right. So we just kept in touch because eventually, shortly after that, we all left for college, and Bao was still in Seattle, right. um, and he was pursuing his computer science degree at the time. So, um, but we kept in touch, uh, working on project to project, and then. Um, you guys did Carmen's Virtue while I was still in San Francisco. So you were bouncing back for that. So that, I think that was your first time working with that. Right, right, right. So, um, yeah, I mean, when we, when we saw going back to Bao's early, like that first short film, we definitely knew that this dude was thinking about it differently. Like he was telling stories, right. And this kind of gets to he, him. Um, it really influenced in the way I approach action design as well, but, him just being in that space of wanting to tell a story and wanting you to care for characters kind of was different to me. Cause like Sean was saying, we were just running around parking lots and like trying to figure out the setup to the fight. Right. And he was trying to, you know, he was, he was writing scripts and, you know, stuff like that. So we were just like, okay, this is different. So I definitely want to get, I want to get a meeting with this dude. He's, he's, he's thinking we need, we can learn something from him or at least do something with him. He's got skills. So yeah. um, After that, we, we kind of split went our separate ways, but, you know, during the holiday breaks and summer breaks, we were coming back to Bremerton. We were staying at the folks' house, and you know, if there was if there was nothing popping off, what, what were we going to do? Go out and hang out and talk film and talk about the stuff we're learning, and maybe share some new movies that we saw, and also maybe film a couple little short things. So we kind of just kept it kept it going. We kept that rhythm going, just kind of doing projects here and there. Um, we would share the stuff that we're working on, and and kind of kept that open forum with like critiquing each other and just letting each other know like. Uh, just trying to help each other get better right um but eventually Bao got to the level of writing this first kind of short film which was called Carmen's Virtue I think that came out in 2003 and um I helped choreograph it um I was also one of the the featured fighters I guess what they would call it and so that was an interesting thing again here's Bao again pushing you know pushing story pushing production value pushing all these things so you're just kind of like 
okay, he's, he's, he's doing something really special. And I think around that era, I was like, this, that's it. I'm locked in. I, I, I just want to stick close to this guy. No matter what he does, does I want to know what he's doing because I want to somehow be involved and contribute if, in any way that I can. Even if I'm not the choreographer or whatever, I just want to know because he was doing some special stuff in the time and thinking on the edges of the box, you know, like he was, he was really kind of pushing it. So um, that early foundation of our kind of our the friendship of that's why that picture means a lot to, I think, Sean, me and Bowers, that was the, the origin of kind of the creative team. There's even a photo you might be, it's on my IG, um, uh, we're kind of jumping forward, but I remember when we wrapped our last shot of uh, the Paper Tigers, it was Sean, Bao, and me in a tent because we were getting the last shot of um, uh, kind of the the final death scene or whatever we call that. Um, oh, no, sorry if that's a spoiler, but spoiler, <laughs> spoiler alert. <laughs> it's not a death scene, but anyways, um, we were in the tent, we wrapped, and I just remember Sean looked up, Bao looked up, and we kind of just looked at each other and we just embraced because it was like, you think about all the years that led to that final shot and the final cut and, and just the final action, the final Sean being behind the camera. It was just, it, it was just like this, if you think about everything that we worked up to and even the days on the shoot, it was just a kind of an emotional moment for me to like be just the three of us in the tent, you know, um, to share that moment, to, to be like, look, we did it again. You know, like that was, a, it was a super emotional moment for us. And I think um, the reason why it meant so much to me anyways, is because of the, the years that we had worked together and we had kind of just stuck by each other's side and believed in each other. And again, goes back to that, that, that bond and that friendship, that trusting one another with each other's creative vision. So it's a special group of guys, you know what I mean? Like to, to have to, to, be together at a premiere of something that you've been talking about for so long and talking about not just paper tigers, but just talking about making movies. So that's, that's kind of the bigger thing. It's just like, man, we're reaching people. We're finally reaching people. Like we're a lot older now, but we're, you know, we're, we're, we're reaching people now. And this is the exciting part of where we are. Um, and in this, you know, how we're intersecting with this, uh, this new audience, if you will. So that's the, to me, I don't know how I got to what I'm telling you right now, but that's the, <laughs> that's why I feel it was so emotional to be um, moving through this journey together with these these gentlemen. So this, that's what motivates me, man, is seeing these guys work. And so I want to bring my 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 game to the table because they're doing the same. So it's a, it's a it's one big long collaboration. Nah, bro, I fucking love it. Excuse my language, man. I absolutely <laughs> love it. It's like I see, I'm like scripting out like already a story in my head of <laughs> the three y'all uh, stories because it's so fascinating and amazing. And, and, and you know, uh, eight, my, my Asian squad here, you know, two Filipino brothers. I, I don't, I'm not sure what what ba Bao is, but is it, what what is Bao? Is, is he Chinese? No, Vietnamese. Vietnamese. Vietnamese, you know what I'm saying? But like some Asian brothers getting together, just, just how that all evolved and just how it went different ways. Cause that's, we don't get stories like that of us as Asian mm. folk told. And that's mm. what I think is amazing. And to see the success that like, that would be the climax of this story. If we were to tell your story on the film <laughs> as y'all just finally, boom, y'all made it, man. Y'all did it uh, from, from home videos to now. It's just so beautiful, bro. Um, yeah. So, uh, 10 years to make this thing. So y'all, y'all work together. You got involved. That was beautiful. Y'all shining together. Um, just that process of getting it to screen and it's now finally seeing this world. And we open with, you know, just that, that, that amazing, you know, feeling that is for both of you guys that, that it's now out here in the world. But uh, um, through all that time of, 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 of it finally getting out there, um, I, I don't know what more do you want to say on that or just, having faith in a project uh if there's anything else you wanted to add, just add to that uh and and or some lessons learned uh in, in regards to that uh, of keeping that vision going to, to to making it happen to where it is now and, and what it taught you both as, as well uh now that it's out there that's a lot i know i gave you a lot but you know <laughs> if there's just anything you want to add to that just amazing story man because uh, I got to give a shout out. Yeah, to, to yeah let's go some shout outs. Well, you know, I think, you know, I'm talking about just Sean, Bao and myself, but the fact that there were so many people supporting this project for such a long time and believing in it for such a long time is, is 
the reason why we had the opportunity to express our art and to and to get our vision out there um had it not been for the fight that the producers do on a daily you know just making the way and making it possible for us to you know although it's a it was an ambitious um timeline they 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 gave us days to do what we needed to do you know what i mean so yeah the fact that those guys continue to stand up for us and continue to make these opportunities to talk to you and, and to and to push the, the you know the message of the story of how the story was made and you know the movie itself but there's something special about the I think the team that made the movie which is I think also just as fun and fascinating because of the the the, the amount of time and the amount of passion that is backing it and it's really starts with the community and the team that has grown over the years. I mean, not a team, it's a family. I mean, you really did feel like you were part of a big family on this set. Um, every, every day was, was a joy to be on set, even during the really creatively stressful moments where we had to make some hard decisions, at least in my realm of working with the actors and working on choreography. It's a very strenuous thing. It's very stressful on the body and, you know, coordinating with Sean and making sure he understands what we need in the shot. And then just being open, but also being on point. And there's so many things that have to hit the stick, the landing on those days. And the fact that um, we have that space and that mental clarity to be able to pull through those moments, I think is a testament to the team that made the way and continue to hold us up while we were being creative and protected us from, you know, just the stuff that happens, the stuff that happens that we don't know happened, you know, like, I still hear stories about this and that on set and this thing went wrong and that, but they protected us from it and they, they kept us in the creative space. And um, it's just a huge shout out to Alan, Michael, Dan, um, Yuji, and yeah. all the producers that helped, man. Cause they, if it wasn't for them, really the paper tigers, uh, we don't know how, you know, it might've been next year that we would have been shooting or maybe not at all. So you really got to give a um, huge shout out to the producers on this. You know, they, continue to fight like i said so um huge 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 respect to those guys yeah for sure yeah we think about because like we pushed multiple times for this movie like just due to scheduling and funding and whatnot and if we you know and we were barely like okay we barely had the green light to shoot because it's summer 2019 so we began production in august and we were like you know in june we weren't 100 percent if we were shooting or not and it, and if we pushed like we we wouldn't be able to shoot in the fall because it's Seattle. So we'd have to push to summer of 2020. What see what happened when the paper tigers never would have been made probably like if we continue to push. So it's like, you know, again, yeah. Reiterating how like the producers mean, you know, did everything and fought, you know, tooth and nail to make sure this movie got off the ground, like from raising, from raising the money from like, you know, jumping two years prior to getting the Kickstarter going, Kickstarter going like it's it was a long process and there were there are definitely times where it'd be you know unsure it's like so many times there's so many things in this world where it's like especially in this business is like I think it's going to happen but I can't guarantee it you know and they always knew it was definitely going to happen couldn't say when but they knew it was going to happen and, and it did and, and we we're all very very thankful and lucky to have that you know driving force for the movie and going back and then touching on like you know again like the family that we had like there there was a bit of a creative gap for all of us like all getting together because the last time i know um the guys did the challenge together I, I unfortunately missed that um but prior to that all of us working together was a short film called bookie in 2008 so there's there's a big gap but like again you know 2008 to 2019 uh it was, there was no real like mental gap. It was like, yeah, we're back. We're doing this. You know, right. like, we didn't feel we were rusty or anything like that. It was like, oh yeah, let's, yeah 2008 was yesterday. Like we're just picking up where we left off. That's that unique bond that I'm talking about. Kuya. You know what I'm saying? Like we, we can just, we just fall right back into place just like we were back home and holding dad's camera. You know what I mean? Like there's, that, there's definitely that feeling of just, it feels natural to work together. And, um, you know, I'll do anything with these guys. Like it's, it's, I know no matter what, if it sees, you know, a theater or if it just ends up being something fun for us to watch and, you know, at, a, at our own personal screening, it's worth it to collaborate with these, with these guys. So 
it really is like it really a testament to the faith in the project and and just the team that was built over the years the family that was built over the years it's just it's a really incredible feeling to be here on the other side you know there's still a lot of work to do to get this thing promoted and to get more eyes on it and you know yeah. hopefully to get the message out there about our people poc you know getting out there that representation and, and oh, yeah. you know guys like us <laughs> we didn't you know this is it's crazy to be on this side and talking to you about something like this and you know when you start off you don't set out to necessarily do something like you know that's not what your aim is you just want to do dope stuff with your homies and just kind of exactly. be about that but you eventually learn that the with the greater reach you have a, a bit more responsibility with the messages that you're putting out there and it's a it's a it's a great film to have that at our back to to kind of promote not only our artistry but also just the messages within the film and the messages behind the behind the scenes so definitely you know, i love man i can't say enough man and y'all y'all have said quite a bit man it's just I, i'd say I, i've dealt with a lot of projects i've done with large profile projects and, and just the love and everybody that i've met and that is involved with this has just been amazing yeah so definitely shout out to the entire cast crew the producers man everyone that i've encountered with this project has been just beautiful man and I'm so happy that it's seeing success and getting uh, put into, you know, top martial arts films of all time already. Um, and it definitely deserves that love. And you, you can see that love. And, and, and like everything y'all said, it's in there. And, and just these stories behind it. Uh, I, I'm going to I'm telling you, I'll pop, start. It, it's already in the morning now over here on the East Coast. But I'm going to start on that Bremerton to the Bay uh, 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 feature about y'all. <laughs> uh, you know, in the next couple of days, because it's a beautiful it. story, man. I love it. Um, oh, just I, I, I know right now we, we're in the midst. It's, it's out there now in the world. Uh, you know, and like I said, I dropped it in my thing that I want a paper tiger too. I know you're far from, you know, kind of even thinking about that right now. We just want to still get paper tigers one out there. Uh, but uh, is there any desire, hunger for more uh, with collaboration between y'all uh, and and other projects down the road, is there uh, other things uh, that we want to, uh, you know, highlight uh, and, and talk beyond just uh, Paper Tigers? Or, or is, it, is it just that's where we're at right now, just really pushing it out there? Uh, but just anything we can promote before we sign out uh, and give love on? Because, uh, I, yeah, like I said, I, I want a Paper Tigers too. I, I, I kind of had some ideas in mind. I know when I had Elaine on, he had some ideas in mind. Uh, but just, 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 uh, just some stuff in general uh, that we want to talk and promote and highlight uh, with you both. I think I'd love to be able to run it back. I think, you know, again, like, like, you know, I've, I've told people who watch the movie and like, even like outside of the, our circle, you know, uh, who enjoy, it, I'm like, they're, they'd ask like, how, how do you feel about the movie being? And I was like, dude, like not many people, especially as filmmakers get to actually have their dreams come to fruition. Like Kenny and I, as high schoolers were like, yo, one day maybe we'll, you know, you see a movie we do on the big screen like seriously like that's we had these conversations i remember when we watched a movie like fight club or whatever like that it's like man it'd be amazing if we could actually if we could actually achieve that and it seemed so attain unattainable for the longest time yeah, man. And, then, and then on top of like okay then we did the movie and they're like oh dope we, we got the movie and then like how are we gonna I can't wait for the world to see this and then covid hits and it's like is anyone gonna see this you know so it's just like and then the way things worked and actually getting a theatrical lease is like, it's, it's still mind blowing. I mean, we were, it was less than two weeks away, uh, two weeks earlier. So it's like, it's still fresh in my mind, you know? Oh God. Yeah. It still feels, it's just, it's an incredible feeling to have your, your work, you know, seen and, and reach so far. Um, and, but with regards to running it back, and I would, I would, at the drop of that, I would work with these guys, you know, especially the you know even the, the 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 entire crew it would be such a fun reunion and i think we would all we'd all be excited about the opportunity to get back together on that set and to recreate that vibe and make it better and, and to grow it and you know working with elaine mckell uh ron um matt and all the other fighters just having the opportunity to work with those guys you know in the, in the action realm was a privilege to to work with them and to train them and to get you know, the performances out of them. So everybody that I crossed paths with on a set was, I learned something from, um, even if the lessons were sometimes hard in those stressful moments, but, you know, we got something huge out of it and the experience I'll trade for nothing, you know, and I, I would, I would love to have another one of those in this lifetime. So 
and I can't wait for it to happen again. Hell yeah. I love it, man. And uh, before I ask you my last question, when, uh, when I found out from Michael, uh, so again, shout out to Michael Velasquez, shout out to Alan DeWong, shout out to everybody on the, uh, the, 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 the Paper Tigers team, man, that have been just so beautiful with uh, allowing me to talk to Elaine and, and Michael. And I missed out on Ron because I, 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 my scheduling got too late, so I didn't get a chance mm-hmm. to talk to Ron. I'm looking forward to talking to you, Ron Juan, because uh, mm-hmm. I love this character. He was hilarious. I, I've never seen Ron act like that before, and he killed it. He um, held it down for sure. Killed yeah. it. Um, when I found out that both of y'all were Filipino, when Michael told me and, and that I suggested I should chat with y'all, uh, I was like, what? The, the DP <laughs> and the fight crack from Filipino? I just <laughs> happen to have this script that I'm working on because w- one of my goals as a filmmaker is to tell the story of Lapu Lapu, y'all. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, the Battle yeah, of yeah. I think that's our uh, Black Panther, if you will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, to find out that y'all are Pinoy, I was like, yo, I got to get y'all cats. And then when I finally saw the movie, I was like, I definitely got to get y'all uh, as uh, uh, on my team because, uh, you know, we need some more FMA, you know, uh, oh, and Pinoy said we need our people doing our, our stuff and, and showing yeah. our stuff. And y'all killed it, man. So uh, bravo, man. I'm so happy for you both. Uh, it's beautiful. And, and I can't wait to highlight. And again, y'all part of the show, Pal Show family now that you've been on. Uh, anything y'all have coming on in the future, I definitely want to show light and love. Um, but before I go, I have one last question because, uh, show pal show, we are the nerds of color. Uh, if you were to give a Ted talk, uh, on any nerd type of subject, and it doesn't have to be, a, you know, traditional nerd pop culture type stuff. You could be, I, I had, uh, my, my, my man, Rodney Salinas, who is, uh, uh, could tell you all about, uh, politics and like every president, uh, uh, that ever was like he, I have another cat that was on that could tell you all about tax law when I had I think Lee Shorten on uh, who's on the terror. Uh, what 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 could you give a TED talk style talk on uh, if you were asked to do a, a TED talk on something? Uh, let me throw it to Ken first. Oh, man. <laughs> wow, I think it would definitely it would definitely be in the realm of martial arts and 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 self development. Um, I think the martial arts have guided me throughout my entire life and, and a lot of the decisions, the big decisions that I've made, um, even moments of stress and, and confrontation. It's helped me through some, some, tough, some tough moments. And um, it's really been a guiding kind of force in my life. And it's, it's one of the things I'm most passionate about is movement and, and martial arts. So if I could somehow package up all that knowledge and, and present it in a way that could help people. I would love to do that one day, you know? Yeah. So like Bruce, be like water. Was it, was it Bruce? He said, be there like you water. Go. I, yeah, mm-hmm. Bruce, that's his thing. Yeah, for sure. For sure. There we go. Awesome. What about you, Sean? Um, I mean, I guess immediately I just think of, uh, I mean, like I said, I've been a camera assistant for 16 years. So I think I've, I, I think I have some wisdom I can pass along, I, I, you know, of, you can do like, it with your eyes closed. You, yeah. You know, and learning the ropes on the, <laughs> within the industry, there's like, again, like a, not just camera assisting, but like just the film industry in general, like for anyone that's like trying to get a start, I think I have definitely some pointers and stuff like that and how, how one, not to get discouraged and two, on how to help yourself grow in this, in this business. So awesome. it's been a big part of my life. So I, I'm happy to share stuff like that for sure. Hell yeah, that's awesome. And that's a great transition. Before we leave out, uh, if y'all are on the socials, how people can reach out to you. New fans of both of y'all, uh, I, I'd like to give y'all the opportunity if you uh, have it available to the public. Uh, are you? Do you like getting hit up on the socials? Do you want to share that for, for everybody that's listening? Yeah, Go sure. On. Yeah. Drop like my IG. Yeah, yeah. IG, Twitter. Uh, for our audio listeners, and then I'll also have information in the description below how y'all can hit up uh, Sean and Ken. Kuya yeah. Ken, Kuya Sean. Yeah, hit me up on IG. Uh, my uh, handle is Evolution, E-V-A-L-O-O-S-H-U-N. That is my original Hotmail address, <laughs> A-I-M, chat room. Hell yeah. You know, handle, and I've kept it ever since. So. All right. <laughs> I, I only mess with IG, if, if at all. And uh, you can find me at uh, Kung Fu Kenny Official. So that's me. And, and I, I do, it's it's private, but, you know, like, I'm letting people in that if you guys, if you, you know, people have been reaching out and, and kind of like. I'm going to send you a friend with Chris, bro. I already sent one out to Sean. So, oh, so we're? I'm gonna send one. Yeah, I sent you one right yeah. before we started, man. That's how I saw the pic earlier. Oh, right on. 
Yeah, so I'm gonna send you one too. Boom, there we go. I'm gonna follow back for sure. I Reach appreciate it, man. Awesome. Yo, uh, I, again, man, this has been a pleasure, man. Kuyas, man. Uh, yo, it's it's wild and just seeing that success. I, I love it. You know, I think I was remembering now, I think it was 94 when I left out of Port Orchard, man. So I don't know if y'all were there in 94, uh, yeah. probably still in high yeah. school or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. There. Yeah. I was a junior. Junior, I'm an old head, man. 77. I was born in 77, man. So I know if we're the same age. Probably right around. You know? I got 80 kids over here. We're 80 babies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Man, there. but you love to see it, man. I'm so proud of you both, man. And, 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 and uh, I'm honored to, to share your story and, and celebrate y'all. This has been beautiful. Um, this is uh, your boy, Kuya P. Let me get, go ahead and get y'all out of it because it's been a late night. Uh, Kuya P, you can follow me at Strange Since 1977 as well as at Temple Far East here at the Show Pal Show and at the Nerds of Color on everything. And salam apo, y'all. Mahakita. We appreciate y'all. This is the Show Pal Show. Thank you, Kuya P. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Thank y'all. you, Kuya P. What is up, y'all? My name is Sean Mayer. I am the cinematographer for a kung fu film called The Paper Tigers. Hey, everybody. My name is Ken Kitigua, and I'm the action director for The Paper Tigers. Please watch our film. It is available on all platforms, video on demand. And if you're ready for it, we are in theaters, so you can watch it safely. And please check out our interview with Kuya P on the Show Pow Show. All right, my Filipino heritage to me is it's my family. That's what it comes down to. That's where I'm from. That's who I am. Uh, I'm from the Philippines. My parents uh, raised me and I, I've become everything who I am via my heritage. And it encompasses food, music, um, the arts. Um, it's my identity. It's who I am. Hey, my name is Ken Kitigua. And being Filipino means to me family, uh, the foundation of, of who I am and what uh, my grandparents have done for me and, and the, the, the way that they've paved for me to, to be a creative and to pursue um, a life of art and expression and to uh, share these stories with the world.